Hello and welcome to today's video where I will show you a simple way to send an HTTP request using OK HTTP, the latest version, the third version in Android Studio. And as always, we're going to try and do it the easy way. So let me just show you what we're going to actually build today. We will have a simple user interface for today's app. It will have a text view that will display the received data and a button to get the data from the URL. So this will be a JSON file that we get from the server and we display it on our mobile device. And this is part one. We just display whatever we receive. And in the part two of this video, actually it will be in the second video, I will show you how to work with JSON objects in Android Studio so you can display the received information in a user-friendly way. So let's move to Android Studio and show you the code and exactly how it runs and what it does. As always, you will open Android Studio and you will create a new project. And that will be an empty activity project for phones and tablets. Once that project has loaded completely, you will see on the screen something similar to what I have here. And in the left side, you have the project folder showing the files and the folders that are contained in your project. And here in the middle, you see two files which are already open. One is the main activity Java file, where we will write the main code of today's project. And you have the activity main XML file where you can modify the user interface. Okay, but before we start and we actually do the coding and the user interface, I would suggest to open the Android manifest file and you can find it under the Android view, make sure you have Android view selected here in the upper left part. Then you have the app folder, the manifest folder, and then Android manifest XML. You open and you have to enter a permission for your application to use or to access the internet. So I will just put something like this. User permission is going to be Android name, Android permission, internet. And you just place this permission here above application. Once this is done, you can just save the file. You can close it. And the second thing to do is to add some dependencies. And for this, you have to go to Gradle scripts and you open. You have build Gradle module and you open this one. And then you take, I'll show you which part of code. Then you scroll down here. Let me zoom in where you have dependencies and you just create a bit of space and you insert this line of code. And uh, this will be at the moment of making this video, the most up-to-date version of this OKHTTP OK dependency library. So this is what you place here and you save it. Don't forget to sync it. You have this synchronize button, synchronize now, or you have this light bulb. You can just click down on it and say sync. And you just let it synchronize and move on with the rest of the code. I can just close this part. I usually close the project folder as well, so I have more space to work uh, with my user interface. Because we will send a HTTP request and receive back some information from the server, we will use this text view to display the information. So what I can do, I'll just click on this text view. And I will change some attributes. I'll start with size and I will increase the text size to 24 so we can uh, read it easier. Then I will go for the ID because I need to reference this text view. I just give it an ID TV from text view received data. And that's all I have to do with the text view. I can leave the text as it is because it will be modified in the program, but you know what, just make it even easier or nicer. I will just select the text view and I will change its text attribute from hello world to receive data here. Okay, now we need to drag and drop a button. And because we have a constraint layout, we'll just create some horizontal constraints. And then I will create a 
vertical constraint, one should be enough. I will also give it a bit of space between itself and the text view above. For the ID of the button, I will say btn get data. For the text of the button, I will just say get URL data. And I should increase the size as well. So I'm searching for the size attribute and then I'll make the button, let's say 20. Okay. One last thing before I forget, I select the button and I will search for another attribute which is called on click. And I will indicate the name of the method that will be executed when we click on the button. And I will call this method on click get data. Okay, you hit enter and you might get some warning. You might see a red uh, warning light over here because we don't have this method created at, uh, at this time, but don't worry, we will create it shortly. So we can go in the main activity file. And here I will just open this section so you can see what it is imported until this moment. Let's create some variables. And we have a text view. This is from Android widget and we call it text view show data. Then we have a string So what I have here, I have the text view, and this, is, this will be the variable that I will associate with my control in the user interface where I will display the data. Then I have a string URL, and this is the place, this is the address uh, online where I will get the information from. And this is a place, an address, where I uh, find out that there is this JSON which I can download and display, but you can replace this address with whatever address you want and whatever address you know you have some information at and you can request it from. So this is just specific to this application. I don't know how long this will be online, how long this uh, server will be accessible and you will get the information from, uh, but for now it's uh, online, it works. If this doesn't work and throws some error, then you can just change this address to a different one that might have uh, available JSON and I think, but I didn't test it, I think this one should also be an address. I think it's with slash two, but you can just try it. Okay, so we can try the second one as well to see if we get some information, but the first one is verified and there is information available over there. Okay, so let's go to the onCreate method. And inside the onCreate, we have to do several things, not too much. We'll just say the text view. So data, this will be, okay, I have a typo here. This will be equal to find view by ID. We take resource, we take ID, and then from the list that will appear. Where is it? Text view received the data. Next, we have to go and implement the method that will be executed when we press the button. And for this, I'll just write some code and then I'll explain what it does. It's going to be faster that way. So I will just show you what I've done until this point because it's an interesting part that will follow. So of course I have uh, declared this on click get data method and I've started to implement it. Don't forget when you add the view here, you might need to add the corresponding library. So if you see it red, just do that. Uh, then I have to uh, declare this client. This is the OK HTTP client. And this is obviously going to be a new client created and a new request. We need this request so we can pass the information such as the URL the address where we get the information from. And this string, just a reminder for you, is the one here on top. 
which contains the web address of the server. So where we can access the information, where we set the uh, get request. Okay, and then we build this. Next step, this part, this call, and this is going to be a new call request. And this is the interesting part over here. When you say call and queue, okay, and you make a new callback, you will have this code being generated automatically. And the thing is, uh, as you might know, you cannot run network operations on the main thread. And when we press this button, the on click get data, we are executing the first part of the code on the main thread. And then this part is executed in a background thread, which is automatically created and managed. So this is very helpful for us because we don't need to use the async task, which is deprecated or separate threads and other things. Uh, we can just instantiate it like this. And then we have everything well, everything, the, the part of code executed here is going to run in a separate thread. So I wanted to show you how this is generated automatically so you don't have to type it in by hand. And then we have two situations, two scenarios. What happens if we fail or if we get a response? So if we fail and we don't get a response, what I would suggest is just to display a toast message, uh, some, some way of notifying the user that there is a problem and we say, Now, let me just explain to you. So in case of a failure, when we don't get the expected response, we show this text, this toast, and the toast, if you don't know how to uh, create one, I have a dedicated video. Check the description of this video and you will find the links over there. So you just have a, to a toast, make text, and you have to indicate the context, and we want to run this on the main activity. So. This is why you have this context presented over here. Then you have the information to be displayed to the user. And I just said something went wrong. And then you have to indicate the duration, how much, how long uh, this will be displayed for. And if you can, if you choose length short, it will be displayed for about two seconds. And if you say length long, it will be displayed for about four seconds. Well, more or less, but uh, just for you to have an idea. And then you have dot show to actually display the toast on the screen. Now, in case we have a response, I will just take whatever I receive and I will just display it. And I say string receive data, and this will be equal to response.body. Okay, we say string. For you to better understand, we have this response over here. And from the body of the response that we are uh, passed over here, we take the string, we put it here in the received data, and we want to display this. So the information that we receive, we want to display for the user. And remember, we have a text view here, text view show data. So this is where we want to put the information. The problem is that right now we are still in the background thread. So uh, I, I sh normally I should say something like text view show data and set text and I should set the text and I will say received data, the string above. However, this will throw an exception because we are running uh, in a background thread and this is a view or a control which is located on the main user interface, in the main thread, so you cannot modify it. And the easiest way, in my opinion, to go around this issue is just to say run on UI thread and then you will create a new runnable. Just a second. Okay, here we are. And you take this text view, assignation of string to the set text method, and you place it here inside the run method of the run on UI thread. Okay, this will take care of running, of uh, updating your user interface. You can just save everything. Then you can select whatever virtual device or emulator or phone you want to test your application on. And let's just run it to see what happens. Now the application has loaded completely and we can test it. I will zoom in a bit so you can see better. 
as I said before, you have a text view and you have the button. The information will be displayed here. And when you press the, okay, get data, not date. You know what I mean? So when you press this button, you will get the data and you press the button and it says data, you have some ID, you have a name, a last name and uh, the link to an avatar image. Okay, now this is all very good. You get the information, the problem is, it's not displayed in a very readable way. So in my next video, which will be very short, I will just show you how to work with JSON objects and to display this information in a easier to read way. But let me just test something before we finish this video. So if I close this simulator and I go here on top, let me just try out to see if the other link will provide some information. So I have the second one. And I stress once again, make sure you have this valid or correct string. So you don't have any typos or anything like this. Otherwise you will not get the data. Okay, so let's come here. And where it says URL, we say second URL. Was it, let me see, yes, the second one. Okay, now indicating the new web address uh, where we will get or try to get the information from. Let's run the program again and see what we receive. Okay, the program has loaded. Let's try it out. And what do you know? This works as well. So this time we have a different idea, different uh, an email address, some names, some other information, but apparently it's a valid JSON. I'm very happy with this. So if you are trying out this program, you can either use URL one or two, they both work. If something will change in the future, uh, just keep in mind the code works. It's only the source of the information that might change and become unavailable later on. Okay, so this is uh, today's video. I hope you have learned something new today. I hope this is useful for you. Until we meet in the next video, which will be very short, just to teach you how to uh, use JSON objects in Android Studio so you can display the information in a more user-friendly way. So until that next video, be safe, take care, keep learning and keep practicing. See you next time.